Hi traders and welcome back with another video with the FX Big Dog. In this video we're talking about football. Yes, the Eagles are going to kick some butt this weekend. Falcons, you're in trouble. Now, let's forget about football. I am still an Eagles fan though, but forget about football right now. Let's talk about the markets. What did the markets do this week and how did we get in? What did, what did we do to take advantage of the moves? Remember, we spoke about the Euro US dollar, pound Canadian, and don't forget about the Euro Aussie prediction, right? We spoke about that too. This is going to be crazy next week because there's a lot of great setups developing. You don't want to miss out on the weekly outlook that's going to be placed on this ch uh, channel. So subscribe right now. Click on the button below. Subscribe. We'll be posting some videos on Monday about the next weekly outlook. We'll be picking out great trading opportunities that we can go ahead and take advantage of. Well, traders, let's go ahead and dig into the charts right after this. All right, traders, well, say hello to my little friend. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so I'm a football fan. And I love watching the Eagles. I support them. My son is absolutely nuts about them. And he just got me and my wife deep involved with that team. Love the team. Love what they're doing. And I love the, uh, the leadership in that team as well. Hey, listen here. Forget about football. Let's talk about charting, right? And then let's also take a look and see what happened this week as the, as the markets went ahead and developed trading opportunities for us. Now, let's reflect this, uh, to the, uh, the weekly outlook that we spoke about, or at least what we spoke about in the weekly outlook. Um, we spoke about the euro US dollar, right? And we said that the, we had the uh, ECB rate decision. We said that there's going to be an unchanged, uh, to, uh, well, the rates were going to be unchanged, which meant that there, there could be some volatility in the market, and it did do exactly that. The market bounced back and, back and forth, but it didn't break south as we anticipated. Well, let's put it this way. We didn't go south for too long before it turned around and headed back up north. And that's what we thought. We thought it was going to be a little choppy, we didn't believe the market's going to go ahead and sell off too far before it turns around and starts heading up. And it did that. And why? Because we are going to look to buy next week. That's what we want to do. But let's go to the charts right now and take a look and see what went, uh, went down. This is the, uh, the uh, I'm going to open up the uh, weekly time frame right here. And you can see on the weekly time frame that we did hit a very key level of support down here, which is uh, uh, at this point right here. And it's identified. But a little bit of indecision right there, but then of course this week has been a bullish week for us. If I go to the daily time frame and I open up the uh, daily, you will see on the daily time frame, and I drag, the, drag it over right here, that is what we spoke about last week. We didn't want price to stay below that level, or at least trade below that level. And so in yesterday's trading, the market did, or at least in the, in the, uh, um, uh, during the, the, uh, the rate decision, we had a bearish move to the downside, right? And for those that didn't know, for those that were not aware of that, if you go to the calendar and you take a look at the uh, this week's calendar, this is what we're referring to right here. We're referring to the 8.30. It was actually the uh, re, uh, the uh, refinancing rate that uh, that moved the market, but the press conference obviously gave some additional movement to the to the uh, the, the market because we knew that the rate's going to be unchanged. But it was, the, it was based on what was said in the press conference that really started making the markets go in a direction. So it was Thursday's movement. Now, if I go back to the chart, then you can see here that we've got this right here. That's the support level we said the market cannot break through that support level. This was also a very key level right here. This support from this trend line was very important because you can see right here how many times the market came to this level but has not broken through that. And traders, we're expecting price to now go ahead and trade to the top of the range and actually break above that and head back up north. We've already started to signal buy signals, all right, based off that entry point right here. Now, this the, today is, of course, Friday. It's the close of the market. We can see that price has gone ahead and closed out with a bullish candle. I'm not 100% convinced that I like that picture right there. But listen, traders, you can go back in history and you can go ahead and take a look and see exactly how the markets have closed out sometimes 
where it does that 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 uh, candle with the wick to the upside right here but the market continues to rally up so this can't be too frightening all right for those buyers in the market you know me too frightening you don't like that because it's it tells us that that price is struggling to break through this right now this is the deal if I go into the uh, the details of uh, this chart right here, I'm not seeing any bullish sentiment over here. So which means that traders, we're not 100%. I would say we'd be 70% bullish at this point in time. Uh, we're certainly not 100%. We never are 100%. But we want to get this this percentage up a little bit. And uh, uh, and so a little bullish sentiment. Bullish sentiment, we'd go ahead and confirm that. Now, if I go to... The uh, the lower time frame. The reason why I'm going to the lower time frame right here is because I want to identify my swings inside this. Now, traders, for those that understand patterns, you you will say that we've got a nice little double bottoms forming right here. The 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 problem here is your confirmation point is here. What does the confirmation point mean? The confirmation point is where price needs to trade above it to confirm the double bottoms. All right. So we need price to go ahead and trade through that level. And if it trades through that level and higher, then it's going ahead and confirming that the double bottoms is actually in fact valid. Until that happens, we don't have a double bottoms confirmed yet. We have a potential double bottoms, but not confirmed. But the deal is this. As we go ahead and continue to monitor the setup, we're going to look at the wave structure as well. Now, the most important thing here, traders, is we never broke out of those lows. Well, this, this low right here. Which means that, traders, if I look at this as a wave 1, this must be a wave 2 right here. And so, we're, if we break through the confirmation point, guess what? We're heading to what we're anticipating to be our wave 3 target. Now, what would that be like? Well, let me go ahead first and put my smart waves. And I love this tool. For one reason, it makes my job a heck of a lot easier by just going ahead and plotting this information up here. I love the fact, oh man, I just love the fact that we have this setup right here where price has gone ahead and created a five-wave structure going up, confirming that this is actually, in fact, my largest swing. I'm going to drag it to the top here. Now I have a large ABA move, which is my wave one. This is what I'm identifying right here as my wave one. So I've got my wave one. That's what I said, wave one. Here is confirmed wave two never took out the low down here. And so now we're looking for price to move here in the short term. What is that price? Well, this is the one hour time frame. What is that price priced at? Well, let's go ahead and put in a, a, a level here. Let's go ahead and put a horizontal line right there on that line. We're looking at about 11.75. All right, sorry, 11.17, my bad. So 11.17, that is approximately... Uh, approximately 100 pips from where we're trading. Now, traders will go ahead and look at this and say, well, big dog, well, 100 pips, man, that's not a lot of pips. Hang on, wait a minute. We're speaking about a one-hour time frame, right? And on a one-hour time frame, 100 pips can be quite quite a lot of pips, especially if you're looking at uh, the 15-minute time frame and you're trading the 50-minute swings within the direction of the one hour. But also, if you look at the one-hour time frame, and you say, well, look, 100 pips probably won't sound a lot to some big swing traders. But if you're looking at an intraday trader, an intraday trader that's risking 25 pips to gain 100 pips, that is a 4 to 1 risk reward ratio. That is awesome. And you'll hear me all day long talking about risk reward ratios and how important that is as a trader when you're looking for consistent returns and consistent wins, right? So if we go back to the charts and we take a look at the details right here, I'm going to go ahead and say that when the market goes ahead and closes out, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit here, or let's expand this a little bit there. There we go. Drag that down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for, you know what? Let me do this. Um, oh, yeah, I need to do this. Let's get a little bit more data in here. All right, there we go. I want to get those lines up there. Now, I'm going to expand it out a little bit. And, okay, now we can see a little bit clearer. I want you to see a little bit more clear on this. Okay, so the most important thing right here, the most important thing, and traders that are in my my uh, um, my learning and trading room, they will know exactly what I'm looking at. So the things that I'm looking for is, number one, I'm looking for the data to confirm the direction. We've got that. 
not in a complete decision candle, but we've got some sort of confirmation that the bulls are in, bulls are in control. That's one. Uh, two, I'd like to see some daily momentum also with this uh, uh, sentiment being bullish as well. We don't quite have that yet. Now, the next thing we want to go ahead and take a look at is the lower time frame. Where are we with inside the swings? And so if we go to the lower time frame, we've identified that the market created a wave two here. Trading opportunity was really over here. This is where we would have gone ahead and looked to buy in right about there. That's our buying signal right here. Now, as the market goes up, we know that the target is here and the target is going to be up here as well. So we still have some upside, uh, upside uh, uh, pips that we can grab on this, but we're looking for a trading opportunity. I'll be watching this very, very carefully around here. As soon as I see the market go bullish at this point next week, it's going to be time to go ahead and get in. Now, this is the deal. If we get a bullish signal and the bullish signal confirms, let's say, around about here, and I place my stop loss, let's say, below the U-turn, about 30, maybe 35 pips uh, from the entry point, and I'm chasing after at that point there about 90 pips, then that means I've got a 35 pip stop. I'm looking at about a 2 to 2 point, sorry, 1 to 2.5 risk reward ratio. I'm going to write this down so you can get it. So it's a 1 to 2.5. What does that mean? That means if I'm risking $100, I'm gaining $250, right? If I'm, I'm risking $1,000, then I'm gaining uh, $2,500. So that's the risk reward ratio. So you, you, you're going to make two and a half times, all right, two and a half times the risk, and that's important right there. So what I'm going to be doing is when the trade opportunity presents itself, and very important, I've got to be patient on this, but when the trading opportunity presents itself at this point right here, when it presents itself, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see, what is my risk? How much am I risking? What is my gain to that point? And if my risk reward ratio is good, then I'm going to go ahead and take on the trade. That's the only reason I would probably want to go ahead and trade it, if the risk reward ratios are good. So the trading opportunity is there. Now it is going to be dependent on whether it's worth the risk. All right. And that's what I'm going to look at. Now, this, now, this is not the only currency pair that we looked at. We also looked at the pound uh, traded against the Canadian dollar this week. And uh, go ahead and take a look. This is actually, if I go ahead and pull up some trades right here. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. These are the trades that we have been focusing in on this week. All right. There it is there. You can see we have uh, uh, the pound, uh, euro pound. We've been selling euro pound. We're up about 213. Markets are closed down. The spreads have gone a little bit wider, but 213 pips is what we're chasing after right there. Uh, we do, we've done very well with that. In fact, if you take a look at our target, our target is at 88.33, um, and so we are currently right now, we're at 88.59. So 88.59, we, we're not too far off. We'll probably be closing out that very early next week, probably at the Sunday open if we get a little gap in the market. And then we've got the pound US dollar, also traded that, and the pound US dollar, we have 413 pips. Our target on that is 125.67. We are about, uh, uh, in fact, if you take a look right here, uh, 125.02 is the current price. We're about 65 pips away from that being uh, profiting from. So we're about 65 pips short of hitting that target. Then we've got the pound. These are the two trades that we looked at this week. We had one of the pound uh, setups that was very, very early. This is the one right here. This was the early setup that we got. But then as the market created a second opportunity, we got in on this one right here that gave us a much better risk reward ratio. In fact, traders, if you take a look at the pips, here we are. Check this out. This is very cool. Um, if you take a look over here, here we've seen on the first trade, we're at 432 pips. A lot of traders, when they look at that, they go, wow, 432 pips. That's awesome. But hold on a second, yeah? Second trade is up 357 pips, but yet we're making more money. Well, the fact is that this is the deal. The second trade was the, the, the second trade was actually on the run. 
and we picked it up with very tight stops, stops like this, where it's very tight, and so the risk-reward ratio was greater. In fact, on this, we're looking at, uh, I believe it was oh, something crazy like um, 8 to 1 risk-reward ratio, So, which means that we, or at least 1 to 8, so we, we, we're making a lot of money on the upside because the risk was uh, uh, tighter, right? We had tighter stops, but the, the reward is a lot higher up. So the risk reward ratio was fantastic on the second trade. Now we're still, uh, let's take a look here. This is where the current price is at. Current price is trading at 1, uh, 166.03, and we're looking for 166.43. Now notice we've got two targets here. For both of these pairs just because this is a larger swing that we're chasing after a larger target and then here is a tighter target which is the third wave move in our swing and we're looking at uh we were about about let's see yeah there's the uh, uh stop there's a current swing so we are at uh, sorry the current price is at 166.03 and 166.43 so we're about 40 pips away from taking profit on this trade so we'll take 40, but, but the, the deal is this, the risk war ratio was absolutely fantastic, fantastic. And that, traders, is important. You must check that out. The risk war ratio is so good when, uh, when you find those trades, all right? When you've got good risk war ratios, it's really good. Let's take a look at how that looks like on the chart right here. And there it is there. I'm going to go to, I'm, I'm not going to take a lot of time on this, but I'm going to show you what it looks like because I think it's important for traders to identify the trades. So here is the deal right here. If I go ahead and compress the charts up right here, this is where the trading opportunity came from. And I drag it over a little bit to the side, and you can see here, uh, move this to the downside right here. There we go, give you some more real estate to, to see the, the setups. And there it is, okay. So if you look at the setup right here, this is where we looked at uh, getting in. We, you can see it here, here is the buy entry point right here, right? This is where we bought in right here. We placed a stop loss. Look how tight our stop loss was at. So this is the entry point. That's our stop loss right here. And guess what, traders? This is our target up here. Here it is. Third wave right here. It's priced at there. You can see on the side there. Uh, you see there is 66.43. Yep, marked off over here. Check it out. 66.43. So we're right there at that level. We're right at the target. Or just about 40 pips at least. So we, we'll probably be closing out that trade. Now we're not going to be done with that, and this is why you're going to follow us on uh, our different, uh, you know, social media outlets. Please make sure that you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. Go for it. Follow, but more importantly, subscribe to this channel. You've got to subscribe to this channel down below. You'll see a subscribe button. It is free, by the way. You don't pay extra service for that. It's free, but you get access to all these videos and all this content that I'm going to. Uh, share with you throughout the week. Now, this is the uh, pound Canadian, and then finally, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, uh, the Euro Aussie prediction. We cannot forget about the Euro Aussie prediction right here, and we can take a look at the daily time frame. And this is the deal on the daily right here. Very important that you see that. And I spoke about this. I said, hey guys, we're hitting support right here. We've hit the third wave. Now we're looking for a little bit of a correction. So we might see over the next couple of days, heading into next week, sorry, into early parts of next week, we'll see the market going up a little higher up. Maybe go ahead and retest that low, but then we're going to look to sell at that point. So traders, I'm actually on the sideline on Euro Aussie, looking for the market to go ahead and retrace back to get back into this trade, to look for this breakout to the south side, and then that is where the money is at. All right. So that's pretty much the, the deal at the moment right now. Looks like I've lost a little bit of... Uh, all right, let me go back to the chart. My bad. Looks like I'm going to have to go ahead and just update the... Uh, looks like I've lost a bit of signal here. But this is the deal. Traders, the deal is this. The markets are currently uh, setting up very, very cool. Let me see. Looks like... Uh, yeah, it looks like it's still cleaning up a little bit. All right, so let me go ahead and go back to that. So the markets are setting up very nicely for a trading opportunity. Very nicely for a trading opportunity. And we have to be absolutely sensitive to the fact that the market moves in waves. And if it moves in waves, we have to make sure that we're ready to rock and roll. Because traders, if we do not, if we not, do not prepare ourselves 
for these corrections, then we're always going to be disappointed. We're always going to be disappointed, and we do not want to be disappointed. And there we go. I'm back online. Sorry for that. I apologize. So the thing is this. We have to make sure that we are uh, aware that the market moves in these waves, all right, in these different cycles. And even though we're, that, that we've spoken about a nice bearish move on this particular pair, and we're chasing off to 2,700 pips on that, we also have to realize that the market's going to dip. We're going to have to take profit off the table. The market's going to rally. We're going to go ahead and get back in again. Then it's going to dip again. And if we constantly do that, we're going to be able to grab a whole bunch of pips for a small move that, uh, that we're anticipating. 2,700 pips is huge when you look at it in such a long period of time. But we can make that up by trading back and forth, back and forth with inside these uh, market cycles. Well, traders, you have an awesome weekend. And again, the Eagles are going to win. Just accept it. It's going to happen. We'll talk again on Monday in the weekly update. This is Epic Big Dog, signing off.